run in practice, and this was my assistant coach, uh, Sippy, and my first chance to kind of get a, to talk to him on the ice and be able to execute some things. And it was good. I'm looking forward to tonight. Talk about the talent you see out there and, and how some of them may fit in uh, with the Americans. Well, there's definitely a lot of talent on the ice. You know, you can see it from the 18-year-olds to the 20-year-olds. There's a lot of a lot of depth in the organization. And, you know, you see, you're going to see guys, I think, like Timmins and Jenks and um, Roback, those types of guys that are going to be able to come in and have an impact. You know, it's going to be eye-opening. They're, they're not 20-year-olds playing against 16-year-olds anymore. They'll be 20-year-olds playing against 20 and 27-year-olds. But I like their skill sets right now. I'm looking forward to it. Talk a little bit about Timmins. I mean, he's a two-time Memorial Cup winner, and he just seems to find the back of the net winner. Whenever and wherever. You know what? And the best thing about him, you can play him in a lot of different situations. You know, whether it offensive roles, PK, you know, taking important faceoffs, you know, and he's one of those guys that can be kind of your nuts and bolts guys. And, you know, there's going to be a learning curve with him, you know, but, uh, you know, I'm excited for the potential. Smart player. Obviously, Pete had him. In, oh, yeah. Kitchener. Definitely. He's, you know, he's a very smart, very cerebral player. You know, he doesn't get too high, doesn't get too low. And, you know, you love those guys that have that calming influence on the ice, even as 20, at 20 years old. Going into Rochester now, you've been in the ECHL for a while. How does your does your coaching style have to change a little bit now that you're going to a more developmental league where you're answering more to a to one team than in well, the E where you're kind of mixing and matching and yeah, and the coach you're mixing and matching, you're kind of going to t to two parents basically as affiliated with Montreal and Nashville. Right. So uh, this way, you know, you definitely you can kind of tweak your systems a little bit towards what P what Pete wants here in Florida, um, and you have to have that group of guys that was ready yesterday. You know, it's a little different. You have to have guys that were ready yesterday for the NHL, as well as you got your handful of guys that are a year away or two years away, and you know you got to manage that and, and try to get these guys ready as quickly as possible. And I mean, you're used to having guys pulled away from you at the last minute. I mean, you're going to oh. see that on the call. Ups. Yeah, it's going to be weird for me to have, uh, you know, being able to dress 18 and 2. You know, and the coach, I've played 13 and 2 some nights, mm -hmm. and some nights we've had to, you know, we had guys injured that were dressed, and I was playing 10 guys. Um, so, the, you, well, not, not quite. We won't get that far. <laughs> if that gets to that point, we're in trouble. Uh, but, you know, it, so I'm used to that. Um, so, you know, fortunately, from a uh, measuring stick, you could be able to, you know, add guys in and be able to, everyone to be able to contribute. So, are you excited about the goaltending prospects in this organization? And we see a bunch of them here, obviously, Mark. Oh, Brian, that, I mean, Jacob. the the, ta the talent and the size of these kids is unbelievable. And, you know, it's going to be great from a standpoint. you got a group of guys now pushing each other, you know, pushing their way up the ranks. And, you know, it's good that these guys have been supportive of each other. I mean, they, they all realize they're, they're fighting for the same net. Um, but at the same time, they're pushing each other throughout the, the drills. There's a game plan. Uh Chevy tonight, Mark tomorrow. I know he tweaked something, but is he, you think he'll go tomorrow? He, he'll, I think the plan is uh, he'll go tomorrow. I think the kids will split tonight um, with Chevy and Fozzie. Okay. Um, and uh, and then we'll see, you know, see how uh, Markstrom is tomorrow, whether he'll get the full game or someone will you know, come in and, and take a couple periods as well. We'll kind of play that one by ear from a medical standpoint. Uh, going back to Rochester, have you been up there? Have you vis spent a little time up there yet or no? I, well, I grew up 45 minutes outside Rochester. Um, so I'm a Western New York kid, um, you know, so I'm fortunate from that standpoint. You, you don't get many opportunities to coach in your backyard. Right. Um, so I've been there for a couple of weeks. So my Jason and myself have been able to work on a lot of things system-wise and um, kind of get acclimated. So when we get to our camp on the 26th, it's just going to be able to step right in. And, you know, we've had some time here to get caught up. So, yeah, pretty comfortable with our environment up there. A lot of bitterness at the end of last year. Year, the way the playoffs ended, the coaching thing, a whole lot. I'm sure you heard about it. And then they reports that they weren't happy with the Panthers as a whole. How do you guys, as a coach, try to mend that and kind of? Well, yeah, I mean, the biggest thing from my standpoint is to develop players. And I'm a big believer if you develop, you win. You know, Rochester wants to win right, right now. Right. Uh, Florida wants the guys to develop and, and get that time. And I'm a big believer if these players develop, it's, it's how you end the season. No one remembers who wins the President's Trophy. Everyone remembers who wins the Stanley Cup. So from my standpoint, it's about the process, and my job from both organizations' standpoint is to get these players to play important games in the spring, and that makes everyone happy. Yeah, and it seems like you're an outgoing guy. I mean, that that should help. I mean, with, with I, the fans up there. I, I I think so. You know, I try to bring a positive nature. Um, you know, I like to have fun with the guys. Um, you know, I'm you know comfortable interacting with the fans and things like that, and that's part of the game. You know, getting the players out in the community. Um, you know, for these for these young players, it's important for them to, to get involved in different things and not just worry about their two hours between workouts and on ice. They're professionals and they, they got to have as many you know positive impacts whatever community they're in. Is there a, a game plan for like when this team goes to Rochester to play the Bruins of maybe how many guys are going to be leaving there with you? I, I think there's a plan you know what would what will happen you know because I, I believe there's what seven exhibition games total um, if you know I, 
might be off by one there. But, um, you know, there's definitely a plan in place for some guys, how it's going to move along, you know, in the process, you know, all the way till probably the final cuts on October 3rd, right before they get ready for the regular season. Now, are you sticking with, with the Panthers till the third, or are you going? Are you No, uh, the Rochester game will be my last game with them. I'll be okay. with the Carolina, the Boston game, and then that'll be my last game because we start camp the 20s that Sunday. Um, so with our tryout guys coming in and everything right. else, um, you know, I'll get a good chance to see the guys that were potentially be Rochester guys. And I'm looking forward to some of the battles. You know, there's a lot, you know, Pete's talked about, there's a lot of jobs open on this team. And they're looking for those character guys that are going to battle night in and night out and right. be proud of the Panther crest. I guess you got 20, 28 guys. You got to well, you sit six tonight and six tomorrow. That was the game I, I think that's I think that's kind of the, the plan. Um, you know, I, we, we're going to dress uh, 10 and six for the game, 10 forward, six uh, defenseman Nashville's a little short with forwards, so it's good. It's comfortable for me. It's an ECHL lineup, so you dress ten and six. Um, so you know, I'm not worried about that from that standpoint. It's going to give these kids a real chance to get some shifts and see what they're capable of. I know it's a, it's a while away, but excited about the the start of the AHL season. Oh, extremely excited. You know, it's kind of you know, Jason and I've been chopping at the bit to get on the ice here, so it was like one of those things they had to pull us off just as much as they had to pull the kids off. Um, so it's looking for this is what we do. This you know, you get a chance to come and work in a track suit and a baseball hat and you know, coach a kids game. It's a beautiful thing every day, and uh, you got to appreciate every day you get to come to the rink. Beautiful. Thanks, Jeff.